Hello everybody, what is going on? And if you're a Canadian like me, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I planned on doing a video today, and unfortunately, this is my first ever frame quarry design. I'm still working on it. It uh, currently seems to be crashing my client for some reason. I'm on a server right now, and it's not crashing the server. So I'm a little bit confused as to what's happening. But anyway, so uh, today I decided to instead go over some basics of red power as I will be using a lot of red power in my future tutorials so I figured it'd be good to go over that real quick uh, first up gonna be using some lamps to demonstrate how it works gonna get into some basics then some more advanced things and later on probably gonna go into some other stuff as well so first up basic redstone pretty simple everyone knows here is the redstone wire basically an upgrade to redstone and works pretty much the same uh, it's a little bit better as you can see redstone wire goes perfectly with uh, the normal redstone a little bit of a graphic glitch happening here but no big deal and here is a demonstration of what makes oops what makes redstone wiring really 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 useful well one of the things one of the many things as you can see, a design like this to do with redstone, uh, just regular redstone, would be extremely frustrating and pretty annoying. But when you have redstone wire, it's very, very easy. You can even put redstone wire on a ceiling. So, very amazing. It's also significantly easier to conceal. If you want your walls to look nice, you have some uh, redstone contraptions, traps, or anything like that. So, that's pretty cool. Um, just starting with the basics again. Here we have a jacketed wire. I believe it's jacketed. No, insulated wire. Insulated wire is basically um, just another thing that you can put into the normal redstone. We'll go over what it's used for later. Here we have uh, two of them side by side. This is why the colors are important. If you want uh, basically a pretty complex redstone design you're going to have two wires touching that you don't want to be. This makes that a lot more convenient. There are other ways to deal with that, but this is the, the basic one. Here we have a bundle. Bundles basically allow um, multiple jacketed wires, or insulated wires rather, to be in the same area. And as you can see, the, the uh, bundled wire is not touching the lamp because the bundled wire holds multiple colors. And if you just send it directly to a power source, it won't know which one to use, and in turn it won't use any. Here we have a multiple one. I'm just showing how this works. Basically, if you want multiple wires of multiple wires, as confusing as that sounds, to uh, be more compact, this basically is your solution right here. As you can see, the red one goes in here, all together into the bundle, and out here. Same with the blue one and the green one. Here I have something a little bit more complicated again. I have colored jacketed wire. And the only real advantage to this that I've seen so far is that colored wires of the same type won't, won't uh, connect. So if I have, for example, the white here and the orange here, they're not connecting. So this green is going into a white one and then a normal one which is what I used here and then into an orange one and notice the signal is still carrying even though there's no uh, specific color connecting them so basically all it does is keeps a bunch of bundles separate this will be useful for more complicated things that I'll be doing later on for right now you probably won't need to know this too much um, and here we go, we have another one. Notice how I have two different colors again, and the red and the green are connected. So what this basically means is that the signals are going here. Let's say I send in blue. Blue isn't getting any power, and that's because the blue goes into the orange one, but there's no connecting to the other one. So even though a few wires are connecting it, the blue one isn't getting a signal. However, both the green and the red one are going through into this one and then they're connected again into a different color ribbon. If I was to take a uh, regular bundled cable, well I just screwed it up, um, just pretend I didn't do that. 
there we go, uh, if I just connected them with a regular bundle, notice all the signals going through. So, with a red, the red one goes through, and obviously the blue. So there we go, this is basically the, uh, the beginning necessary knowledge of wires that you will need. I almost forgot to mention the jacketed wires, kind of important. Uh, mostly just aesthetic, but if you want to send a power signal basically up a like vertically like this without having a wall or something like that or just send a signal basically a place that a wire wouldn't go very conveniently that's what this uh, jacketed stuff is really really great for so basically the uh, normal normal jacketed wire connects to the regular wire not the jacketed or the insulated wire rather and here's another example of it working with the bundled cable pretty much the same idea except for obviously you have to separate it once again into the regular wire after it's insulated so another thing I'd like to point out is different types of jacketed wires do not differentiate them so if you're trying to do that, you're going to have to use something called cable jacketed wire. So I'll get into that in a bit. And just like all other redstone stuff, can be powered by the torches. And here we have an example of the uh, bundled cable jacketed wire. So basically in order for that to work is you pretty much just put them in the same block like this. And that's how you send the signal. It's the same thing with with this. You pretty much just send it the same signal, or put it in the same block rather. And as you can see, it just goes into the bundled, then the bundled jacketed, and then back into insulated, and then back into the wire. And then it's connected to just a regular jacketed one, and then into the lamp. So, as you can see, the, uh, the bundled one and the regular one will not connect. You have to pretty much just uh, connect them through, like, where is it, like this. This is the only way to connect them. So if you want to do the bundled route, then that's what you're going to have to do. And here's an aesthetic example of what it should look like if you do it right. As you can see, it's very well concealed. It looks really nice. And that's another thing I want to mention is the special types of bricks. They pretty much work well with any other part of red power. You just cut them using a saw, which is a tool out of red power. And you can use them for a lot of cool stuff with other red power things. They don't work with other... Um, other parts, only redstone, or red power rather. So how this works is basically I have them connected to the switches here directly underneath the block. It They each go into their uh, their insulated wires and then into a bundled and then into a bundled jacketed wire back into the bundled cable and then back into the respective normal jacketed ones. So obviously this is more complex than you would use for a design like this. This is really inefficient and you might as well just use uh, these. But if you were using a really advanced setup then that would be more appropriate. Here I gave an example of why that's really useful but first uh, just like to point out that it does help separate them so if you were too lazy or too cheap for whatever reason to have multiple colors of wire you can always just separate the same color like this and here we go oops so if you had a really really long line of lamps decorating something and you only wanted to turn one color on or something like that or you wanted to uh, conserve as much wire as possible this is the way to go probably the most efficient way to do it so as far as expensive to make they're a little bit more costly, obviously, than 
the uh, normal ones, but not really too much of a big deal. Anyway, I'll be moving on to the power now. And finally we have power. Here we have a battery box, the storage unit of power in red power. And we have a power wire. And these are solar panels. And as far as I can think of off the top of my head, the only way to store power and transport it is through the wires in the solar panels. Um, I could be wrong, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. And again, there is also a jacketed wire for the power ones as well. They don't go with... Um, none of them go together, they're all completely separate. So, that's how that works, and same as before, basically functions pretty much the same. Here I have multiple battery boxes together, and it pretty much acts as just a giant, uh, a giant power storage, and as before, the solar panels I think have like the wire encoding in them or something, because for some reason, even though they're not all connected through wires, they all act as if they are, so that's pretty good. And here I have a concealed one. Works the same as before, same as with the wiring. I have uh, just the hollow block right here, and the solar panels up here as before, connected through a uh, wire, obviously. And here we have everything mixed together. I have this power set up to a frame motor through a uh, power wire, and then here I have a redstone torch through a signal wire, and there you go, pretty simple. Um, so this is pretty much the basics of red power. I'm going to be going into some more things, some more stuff later, and hopefully it will make things a little bit more um, so I don't have to explain as much when I'm actually building it, because most of the things I like to build are a little bit more on the complicated side, and basics are definitely good to know, so let me go see if I can make something a little bit interesting. I'll, uh, I'll be back in a bit. Peace.